What's going on guys? It's Cameron from Tinker's Musings here and today we're going to be talking about an interesting thing I just bought and whether or not it was successful and yeah, should you do something like this? Well, let's dive in and find out. Sometimes if you buy something for parts on eBay, you end up with just that. But did I? I've been kind of keeping an eye on these 100 gigabit type switches on eBay. And I have a 40 gigabit switch in my rack currently. And it is also a Mellanox. It's the 6036. I did a video about that about a year ago. And I got a really decent price on that. And I never thought I'd find something this cheap. Wow. For 100 gigabits. Yes, it's listed as four parts. There are risks with that. You do need to be okay with that if you're looking at switches that are four parts. Sometimes the problem is not recoverable. Well, let's dive into the listing and see what it says. Why did I bid on this? Why was I gung-ho on this particular switch and not one of these? That in a moment. From the description, it says, sells as is for parts or repair, switch powers on, but would not boot into network operating system. From that description, it does seem like it should be fixable. These are not critical errors that have been listed. And at least from this description and condition, it seems as though I should be able to just take an SSD, right? And reload an operating system. Well, I actually got this switch this last week. And I did have to get some parts for it. In terms of the parts needed, it does not come with any of the fans or the PSUs. So I had to go and find these fans. These were relatively inexpensive. And the power supplies were also a little bit more than I wanted to pay. But if you get the generic DPS 460 KV that is technically fitment compatible, the fans will run at a very high RPM and basically Mellanox code something into the firmware of these when you buy the official Mellanox power supplies. One thing to pay attention to with these types of pieces is the airflow. You want to make sure that the airflow matches up. The airflow here is really important. Power actually is mounted in the front of the rack, so it's not necessarily a full depth switch but the rail kit that you can get for these things is full depth and it will allow you to mount it in either direction the important part is that airflow direction so we've got air going from the power connector through the ports in the front of the switch when I opened up this switch after receiving it, I realized that it was missing RAM. And the thing about the RAM is that it may look like standard laptop RAM from DDR3. And it is pin compatible, but it's not necessarily electrically compatible because you need to have the ECC feature on your DIMMs. And that's very important because it is a server grade switch. It, it's enterprise and enterprise gear requires ECC. So don't think that you can just pull a RAM stick out of one of your laptops and have it work necessarily. I tried that, it would not boot. I got a red status light and it was not a successful swap. But thankfully I found this part for fairly cheaply. I was worried because at first I thought that it required 16 gigabytes of DDR3, but I read in one of the more recent manual publishings that it is only 8 gigabytes. That's a good thing because the 16 gigabytes are ugh, 
over like a hundred bucks just for a 16 gigabyte thing no way um i'm not paying that high for a thing if i don't have to now if your unit if you buy this and your unit doesn't come with an ssd this is a suitable replacement i actually just got this one in this week and the power on hours were really low and that's that's good because it says it's pretty much a new oem nodisk disk m sata ssd the uh switch i got did come with a 16 gigabyte ssd and it looks like it only had 44 hours of power on time which is just mind-boggling because that means that the switch wasn't in operation for very long when i received the switch it was pretty much in bare bones condition ex except for the ssd that they left behind and i found out that sonic os had been installed previously and i guess something got corrupted and they never went back and fixed it so they listed it for parts stripped the screws took out the ram and that's pretty much it there were no screws on the top case it's kind of hard to make out in this picture but yeah none of the original screws were in this i actually bought an assortment of screws here because i wasn't sure about the size and length for these screws i tried some of those screws i do think that it's somewhere around in 2.5 and probably five millimeters or so maybe shorter all of the parts that i just went through have actually come in and i'm still way underneath what these switches are going for and you know the lowest price that i could find was two thousand fifty dollars coming from china and the thing about shipments from china especially stuff like this it's risky because it's a big object and if you want to buy something say in the continental us or local to where you are it's going to be even heftier because they've already imported it from where it came from and you know we're looking at three thousand five thousand dollars for some of these uh <laughs> nearly ten also let me say this if you are looking for an msn 2700 make sure that you don't get one that is only 40 gigabits because you're going to be very limited in terms of the speed you've got to look for the 100 gigabit models it's very important because otherwise you can get a cheaper switch like the sx6036 and save a bit of money there so all of that said and done why 100 gigabits well i never thought that i'd actually find a switch that was this cheap with the 100 gigabit speeds and what does 100 gigabits translate to in gigabytes per second well that's about 12.5 gigabytes per second and in order to saturate that completely we need a connect x4 if not a connect x5 card if you want dual port and those are going to be pci express 4.0 and above for your requirements I'm not yet diving into Connect X4 because I've got to plan out my network upgrade. But the good thing is, is that this switch supports every single Ethernet standard, uh, except for like the odd 2.5 gig and 5 gigabit. But it supports, you know, your, your more well-known Ethernet standards, 1, 10, 25, 40, 50, 56, and 100 gigabit Ethernet. And that gives you flexibility to upgrade your network over time. You are not required to go in and, you know, go nuts with it out the gate unless you want to. You can. Uh, the nice thing is you get 6.4 terabits of throughput. So that means... It's full duplex. You get basically transmit, receive. We have 32 ports and we have 100 gigabits on each port. So that means you can do full 100 gigabits up and down, which is really good in terms of switch performance. Another thing is you can install a bunch of operating systems 
Melanox Onyx, Cumulus, Sonic. It is very low power drop. So I actually did get an operating system installed and I looked at the wattage after it was booted up and it was like between 60 and 70 watts. Now I don't have anything connected to it yet, but it, that is a very low power draw. I don't remember exactly how much the 6036 draws in terms of power, but I think we should see some power draw improvements because it is a generation better than the, the 6036. The 6036 was based off PowerPC. This is based off Intel. I mean, really, the CPU is just for the operating system, and the ASIC takes care of the switching. Okay, so there's different models of this switch. And you really want to make sure that you get one that has the 100 gigabits, not the 40 gigabits. And also pay attention to the airflow. If you get something that doesn't have an airflow that you want, you can swap out the power supplies and fans. Usually, I, I have everything in my setup as P2C, at least currently with my 6036. And this is the variant that I bought. It didn't come with all these parts. They had stripped the parts from it, basically. But I have replaced the power supply and the fans and the, I also got a rail kit. This time I have an official rail kit instead of using something that just happened to fit. Would I recommend you doing something like this? If you have the technical ability, yeah, give it a try. You just need to be okay with a potential loss in your switch investment. It does look like you can return this particular item but a lot of them, you got to pay attention and they will, if you reach back out to a seller that does not accept returns, they're going to give you kind of a hard time about it. If you try to return an item that they say they don't accept returns. Now there is eBay's money back guarantee and that should save you in a pinch, but understand that it is a four parts switch. So it's kind of hard to argue that it arrived in a condition that wasn't quite matching the description. Now, if you powered it up and it didn't quite do what you saw, then maybe you could return it. I would ask a lot of questions if you're interested in something like this. I kind of went into this with faith that it would work. And I looked out but that's not always the case. It can be a challenge when dealing with enterprise hardware, especially ones that are four parts. But luckily, this is a new enough switch that parts are still readily available. The 6036 that I put together last year was basically ready to go. I did have to update the operating system when I got it, but it didn't come with rail kit and the rail kit was hard to find. It's possible that the rail kit I bought actually works with the 6036, but since I will be replacing the 6036 with this SN2700, it doesn't matter so much if the rail kit fits, but it would be neat to at least do a test fit. You might be able to get generic type rails that have the same spacing of these grooves. It's kind of a lock fit and then they got a couple of screws that you tighten down with and it locks in place that said use your best judgment where you're looking at these kinds of things sometimes you can hit a gold mine and i think i did here if you use optics you can get your house outfitted and ready for 100 gigabits om3 should be decent enough for that but i might even suggest om4 imagine having the ability to connect to this switch from any room in your house and of course not all of your equipment would ever run on 100 gigabits but you could throw a melanox connect x4 card in your desktop and you could have some rack gear out in your garage or in your server room and have blazing fast speeds between your desktop and your servers so that's just some food for thought and we'll be getting into more of what this means, how you can do a gradual upgrade, 
and potentially a an attic install as the temperatures cool down towards fall and winter well that'll do it for this video guys i really appreciate you watching to the end here and i i hope you enjoyed if you would please hit that like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of the next video i really look forward to going through this with you and maybe helping give you some tips along the way thanks so much